Mainframe intrusion detected. Oh, don't worry about that, Arya. They'll never find us here. Why not? Well, because I'm using Surfshark, my supercomputing companion. Oh, ho. Today's episode is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is an award-winning VPN that secures your digital life with top-of-the-line servers that encrypt your data and allow you to change your IP address to stay anonymous online and hide your true location. Hackers, streaming services, social media sites that are still ruining democracy, they can't control what you see and what you do if they don't know where you are. If you want to try Surfshark, you can go down into the description box below and tell them your boy sent you by using the offer code KYLE, which gets you 80. 83% off, three months free, and a free 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> hey, Arya, look at that. They think we're on Earth right now. Not even close. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> yes, Lola, I know that Godzilla is a giant nuclear-powered lizard, but King Kong, S. Monkey, surely that must be worth something. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. I'll tell them. According to my kaiju companion here, Lola, many of you are still debating who the winner will be between King Kong and Godzilla. Now, while my kaiju might be biased, indeed, she informs me that there is a weakness for King Kong that many of you aren't thinking about that will shift the confrontation in Godzilla's favor. And that weakness is speed. It's time for some monkey math. No, you can't shoot the radiation beam in here. I haven't even... Finish the roof. I don't... I don't need more holes. Now entering the facility. As we've talked about before on this program, big life comes along with big problems. On Earth, creatures can certainly get enormous. The classic example, of course, being the blue whale, the largest thing to ever exist. But both the Zill and King Kong are so much bigger than this. They're so big, in fact, that their bodies push up against the boundaries of biology itself. One of those boundaries, for example, is bones. Bones have evolved on Earth to be both very light and very strong owing to their structure, but when we're talking about masses on the order of tens of millions of kilograms, no matter how big these bones are in these walking creatures, no matter their orientation, these bones are likely to shatter before even a single step is taken. Now, there are other biological boundaries like blood pressure, heating, and diet, but you've probably thought about those before. One you may not have thought about is movement itself. Very funny, Arya. <laughs> Monkey. I don't, I'm not afraid of monkeys. One of the few advantages that a giant ape would presumably have over a big old Liz is speed, movement, and agility. But because of the mega masses involved here, we can't simply assume that King Kong would move like a giant sized up gorilla. No, because he chonky, we have to involve what are called scaling laws. Now, scaling laws are empirical or observed relationships in nature that relate one variable of a creature to another. Say, heart rate and mass, or heating and volume. For example, scientists have discovered that the larger a creature, the slower the heart rate. A mouse's heart beats much, much more quickly than an elephant's, which beats more quickly than a whale's. And it just so happens that King Kong's mass can be related to his theoretical top speed through scaling laws as well. According to empirical models by Hurt et al. in 2017, the body mass of land animals is positively correlated with maximum velocity, meaning that the larger the animal, the faster it is. While an insect, for example, can reach its top speed very quickly, it is not faster than the more massive mouse or rabbit, and no land animal is faster than the cheetah. But as you can see, this isn't a simple model. The African elephant is much more massive than the cheetah, but it's nowhere near as fast. Why is this the case? The elephant has longer legs and much more muscle mass than the cheetah, but it's so much slower. Well, it's hypothesized that at a certain point, our chart starts to dip here because large animals literally cannot marshal the metabolic resources fast enough, move molecules around their body quickly enough to rapidly accelerate and reach those theoretical top speeds that would be predicted by very simple scaling laws. What a chart like this is actually showing us is that impossibly large creatures like Monke and the Zill are probably impossibly slow, too. But to be sure, we have to do some math. What do you mean you stepped on another Kevin? 
Kevin, get the Kevin spatula. Don't worry why I call it that. You know, even when we accept the biology of giant creatures, there's usually one thing that we still don't see, and that's where they get all their energy from food. What is their diet like? And I think audiences don't get to see this because it would be totally ridiculous. For example, King Kong looks to me like a giant silverback gorilla. Now, silverback gorillas eat a lot of food per day, mostly vegetables like this, like 15% of their body weight every day. So if we apply this to what I'm assuming King Kong's mass is, 15% of that, he'd have to eat 20 million pounds of food every 24 hours. That's like me eating 80 million of these salads every single day. That would be all Kong would do all day is just eat, kind of like gorillas do. And he'd quickly deforest Skull Island. There wouldn't I mean, nearly enough for I mean, Look how much salad this is. It's totally impractical for a large ape. You know that. A few weeks ago, one of my facility staff members turned me on to this paper, which used biological scaling laws to try to estimate the true top speed of the AVA-1 robot from Evangelion. We're going to follow in this paper's giant footsteps, except we're going to use all the models therein to help estimate stuff for a monk monk and not a giant cybernetic berserking robot that's piloted by children. Looking to the paper, we can use this equation, this model. Now we can plug into this model Kong's estimated mass and all of these fitting parameter numbers. These are just here to make this model fit what we observe in nature. Remember, these aren't just silly made up numbers like everything in the Godzilla franchise. That would be, that'd be ridiculous. Plugging in Kong's mass and the fitting numbers from the model, we get a top speed for the monkey to challenge the king of monsters of, Aria, drumroll please. Acknowledged. Just over one kilometer per hour. 0.8 miles per hour. You can walk faster than this. Turtles can move faster than this. Just one kilometer per hour is comically slow, and unfortunately for Kong, it gets worse. If King Kong's step length is maybe half his height in the new film, then because of this speed value, it means that it's going to take literally this long, I'm about to show you, for Kong to take a single step. Are you ready? Okay, this is King Kong moving around and fighting in real time. Okay, here we go. over two and a half minutes for this monkey to take a single step. Just one. It, 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 because of the realistic metabolic requirements for large creatures, King Kong realistically would be the most painfully slow movie monster in history. Oh no, Kong's going on a rampage. Everyone scatter or wait, oh. Should we, should we, should we go or? Y'all want to get a coffee or we good? Oh, he's still there. I mean, eventually it's going to be bad, right? Now we're pointing this all out for Kong and not Godzilla because presumably Godzilla would not have this problem. Godzilla is heavily implied to be powered by nuclear energy and so doesn't have to rely on the relatively slow production and usage of a molecule like ATP, the molecule that powers biological bodies. By relying on internal nuclear energy, Godzilla would be able to shrug off the limits of size and scale and I guess move much more like he does in the films. And this difference in monkey mobility might make all the difference in the world during a more realistic fight. Oh, oh yeah, don't worry about the glowing stuff happening beneath me. It's totally harmless. <laughs> Unlike the reviews of the film, I presume. <laughs> oh, I don't care.
So you want a science boy's opinion? If Godzilla really is a giant, ancient, nuclear-powered lizard and King Kong is just pretty much a big ape, my money has to be on the Zill. We simply know too much about the biology of big bodies for King Kong to have any kind of realistic chance in a fair fight. Too heavy, too slow. Now I know that neither is actually gonna win or lose because money. <laughs> <laughs> but now, at least you can have an informed, nerdy discussion about all of it with people who definitely want to listen. That's good. Until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. Today, especially, I want to recognize research assistant David Lopez Sandoval and visiting scholar Darren Hyham. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape a silky white lab coat over your shoulders, join me on Discord every day, see videos early, get private members-only live streams of me, not like that. You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility, get on staff today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name on Ari here each and every week. And as you can see, there's literally hundreds of you. So I have no idea how I'm gonna pass the time. You're a semi-aquatic animal if you're the big old Zill. And so I think if you wanna fight, you wanna fight on your own terms. Do you know what monkeys can't do? Breathe underwater. And he was on that giant carrier and you just you grab onto uh, his leg and you, and you hold him under the water until he stops monkeying around. <laughs> That's what crocodiles do in real life. I've seen it, it's bad. Hey, thanks for watching.